Two planes flying toward one another. Plane is flying from Los Angeles to New York, traveling 500 miles an hour. Plane is flying from New York to Los Angeles, traveling 650 miles an hour. How long uh, have they been flying when they meet if the cities are 2,450 miles apart? I don't know if that's actually how far New York and Los Angeles are apart, but I feel like I actually looked that up. What? I think I did. I think that's how I came up with that. So it might have been like 2,500, you know, Oh, good point. Thank you. All right. Okay, so L.A. and New York. Uh, you should know that New York is east of L.A. If not, let's take geography over again, folks. Okay. So New York and L.A. So we got one plane. They are 2,450 miles apart. Plane leaving LA is flying at 650 miles an hour. Plane leaving New York. Did I mess this up? Whoops, sorry. Thank you. So LA uh, plane is flying 500 miles an hour from New York, flying 650 miles an hour. Sorry, mix that up. And the question is, uh, how long have they been flying when they meet? So let's think this through. Anybody want to think about the type of equation that I'll use in this problem? Hint, we used it yesterday. Good, great. So distance is equal to rate times time. Now, you tell me, what is the same in this problem? When they meet, will they have been traveling at the same rate? No. When they meet, will they have traveled the same distance? No. Which one will have traveled further? The one that's traveling at 650 miles an hour or the one that's traveling at 500 miles an hour? Hey, go away. Don't look. Ah! Okay. 500, right? Oh, I'm sorry, 650. Uh, the one from New York. Okay. Will they have been traveling for the same amount of time when they meet? Yeah. Uh, Kelsey, can you stand up? Stand at the door. Face me. Yeah. All right. So you're going to walk. When I say go, you're going to walk slowly. Okay. All right. And I'm going to walk quickly. When I say stop, stop. Because I don't want to run into you. Okay. You're going to walk slowly. Like, no. Like, maybe if you are trying to avoid getting to class, that type of slow. Okay. Like, you want to be 10 minutes late to class. Ready? Set. Go. Stop. Okay, all right. So we, we meet, right? Who's traveled further? I have. Who's traveled at a greater rate? I have. But we traveled for the same time. We've each traveled for like a second and a half, right? So the time is the same. Thank you. You can sit down. So we want to solve for time. There's actually about five different ways to set up this problem. This is just one that I, I think I could teach the best. So time is equal to distance divided by rate. And if we find out a time for each one, we could set them equal to each other and solve. So that's the strategy that I'll use. There's a number of different strategies you can use for this type of a problem. This is the one I'm going to use. Okay. So time is equal to distance over rate. So we need a distance. We'll say that uh, the plane traveling at 500 miles an hour traveled X number of miles. So then the plane traveling at 650 miles an hour, how far would it have traveled? We could call it Y, but we need it in terms of X. Suppose that this plane traveled 1,000 miles. How far would this one have traveled? 1,450. What did you do? You took 2,450 and you subtracted X. Right? If you take these two expressions and add them together, what should you come up with? 2,450. When you add them together, do you get that? 
Yeah, just try plugging a number. And that's the strategy I use. Say, okay, if this was a thousand, then this would be one thousand four hundred and fifty. What did I do? I took two thousand four hundred and fifty and I subtracted a thousand. A lot of times that's how you model these type of problems. So now we're ready. What is the distance that this one has traveled? X divided by what's the rate? Five hundred is equal to what's this distance? 2450 minus x divided by what's the rate? 650. How do I solve for x? Cross multiply. 650x equals 500 times 2000. Let's see. No. Is it 1,225,000? All right, I remember from previous class. You just thought I was really smart. Uh, minus 500x. And add that 500x, get 1150x is equal to 1,225,000. Divide both sides by 1150. Somebody take 1,225,000 and divide it by 1150. What do you get? Good. Does that answer the question? No. What's the question? How long they've been traveling? So we're wondering time. Isn't this time? I mean, it says that. Uh, Time is equal to my distance divided by my rate, which is right here. Distance divided by rate. So if I take that 1,065.22 and I divide it by 500, that will give me my time. So I'm going to take 1,065.22 divided by 500. What do you get? 2.13? 2.13 hours. That's how long they've been traveling for. Done and done. Yes, because, Raylan, my expression for distance divided by rate is equal to time. Okay, last one. Okay, and I'll explain uh, how the test is going to go and everything like that. Uh, we're back in uh, uh, cowboy days. After robbing a bank in Dodge City, Dodge City, a robber gallops off at 14 miles an hour. Do, 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 do. Ten minutes later, the marshal leaves, same place, in hot pursuit at 16 miles an hour. First of all, will the marshal eventually catch the robber? Yes. He's traveling faster, so it might take a while, but eventually um, the marshal will overtake the robber and... I don't know, put handcuffs on them or shoot them or something. I don't know. I don't know what he's doing. Okay. Well, I don't, it's, you know, it's like Westerns, you know. They, somebody always gets shot, right? So. Okay. So, uh, so we have our robber traveling at 14 miles per hour. And then we have our marshal traveling at 16 miles per hour. So I'm going to use this distance is equal to rate times time piece. But now let's think about what's the same. When the marshal takes over the robber, have they traveled the same time? No. Have they traveled at the same rate? Have they traveled the same distance? Yes. So the distance is the same. So I will set my equation to distance is equal to rate times time. Now I only need an expression for each one. So uh, the distance that the marshal travels is 16, which is the rate, times time. That's the distance that the marshals traveled, right? Now the robber is 14 times time. But how much of a distance did he get on his head start? 10 minutes. But that's not a distance. That's a time. How far would he go in 10 minutes? How much distance would he cover in 10 minutes? 
How many hours is 10 minutes? One sixth of an hour. What is his rate? 14 miles per hour. So if I want to figure out the marshal's, or I'm sorry, the robber's distance in those first 10 minutes, I will take his rate, which is 14, and multiply it by the time, which is 1 sixth. And when I do that, I get 7 thirds. So he's traveled 7 thirds miles during that time, or 2.1, or 2.3 repeating. Okay? So he's got a little bit more than a two mile head start. And, uh, you know, the marshal actually travels two miles an hour faster than the, uh, than the robber. So should be able to overtake him hopefully in about an hour, right? That would seem to make sense. So let's solve this. What do we do? Subtract 14t, divide by 2. 7 thirds divided by 2 is 7 over, 7 over 6 is equal to t. What is 7 over 6 in terms of time, hours? 1 hour, 10 minutes. So, yep. Just took them an hour and 10 minutes to overtake them. Now, that's how long the marshal's been traveling. So how long has the robber been traveling? An hour and 20 minutes, okay? So some people might say, well, duh, it's just one more hour because it's two miles. No, it doesn't work like that, okay? So one hour, 10 minutes is the total time. All right. You can work on those problems. You can leave out 14, 21, 22. Um, I would make sure that you come back on Monday knowing the questions that you have and that you need to get figured out so you can ask me for help.